Hi, sewing and quilting friends. I'm Ebony Love from Lovebug Studios. And the last time we were together, we worked on a really fun block called Contrary Wife. But I thought, you know, if I ever were to go to a quilting retreat, I would want something fun to bring along. So I'm showing you today how to turn your Contrary Wife block into this fun portable design wall. So let's see how this comes together. You're gonna start off with your contrary wife block and you'll need a rectangle of fabric to add on the side and you wanna add that to the left-hand side and stitch that with a quarter inch seam allowance. I also have you use a piece of fusible fleece so you're gonna take that to your ironing board and fuse this to the project. Once you've done that, you just need to decide how do you want to quilt it. And I thought it would be really fun to use a double needle to create a little bit of dimension on this project. So I've pre-drawn some crosshatch lines here, but I really wanna show you how to do the double needle sewing. So I have the machine already set up with the twin needle. So you'll need two spools of thread that are the same color and a twin needle. This particular one is a six millimeter twin needle. So it works for a lot of machines and it's a straight stitch. You wanna make sure you're in the center needle position with an open toe foot. So, I put the foot down and just start sewing. And what I want is for the line to come right down the center so the open toe foot just helps me to see where I'm stitching. You also want to slow down your stitching because you've got two spools of thread running through the same tension disc, so just pay attention to that. Okay, and then once you have this trimmed up, you need to layer this with a piece of backing fabric that covers the entire project. Once you've done that, you'll want to sew around the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, but you do need to leave an opening for turning. Before you turn the project, I want you to grade the seam allowance and in the corners. And what I mean by that is you're going to cut the seam allowance at an angle down to the corner, and I'll show you how to do this on one of these outside corners. So I just have a pair of really sharp scissors, and I'm just cutting this at an angle. Make sure you're not clipping off your actual seam, your actual stitch, but that just reduces the bulk in the corner, and you'll do that on all four sides, and then turn the project inside out. Once the project is inside out, you need to take this and press it down really nicely. And this is the time that you want to insert your ribbon. And the way that the ribbon is inserted is you need a, this is gonna attach on the back side, and you need the ribbon to be off center a little bit. So you need the short end on top and a longer end on the bottom. And if you want, this is kind of like a book cover right now. So you can just dry fit the ribbon around the project just to make sure that it closes and meets where you need it to meet. And when you uh, do this, before you do the top stitching, you're gonna insert the ribbon into that hole that you left open for top stitching. So that's where that goes. Next up, we need to do the, the boards, the design boards, and I just have some scrap cardboard from a cardboard box, and you'll do a dry fit, and this one's a little bit bigger, so I would cut this down before I insert it in the project. And once you have it to the right size, what you're going to do is attach it to fusible fleece. So I have this piece here where it's pre-fused, and you'll clip out the corners, so just take those off and start uh, to fuse this to the back, okay? So I have one here that is already partially done, so you can see how this just wraps around the corners. And once I've done that, so I've got two boards here, 
and those would go in nice and snug in here. So I'm gonna flip this to the back and just open up my glue here and run a line of glue right on the edge. You don't need too much glue, a little bit goes a long way. Just remember this is a permanent adhesive and if you're working at your sewing table, just if you wanna use a protective mat or something just so you don't get glue on your cutting mat or your table. So we've got that glue line there. Make sure you cap it up because you don't want glue all over your sewing space. Okay, flip that over and then align it here. And you'll want this to dry overnight. And what I like to do just to make sure that this is nice and tight is I use these quilting clips and just go around the edge of the quilting clips to keep this nice and glued in together. Okay. So I would glue the other one, but uh, you get the idea, right? So with the trim, the last part here is to attach the hook and loop tape. One thing you want to remember is that the hook side goes onto the top part of the overlap. And once you've done that, it's so easy to make a fun project to take to your next quilt retreat.